Hey friends, welcome back to the Crow Boutique. My name is Courtney Herrera, and for those of you who don't know, I am a psychic medium, as well as being a certified clinical herbalist and aromatherapist. And this is my channel where I talk about my experiences as a psychic medium. Um, I give herbal advice, recipes for remedies, and other things like that. Um, and each week I try to do my in-person reading reviews. So every week I do in-person readings at a local metaphysical bookstore called The Shining Lotus here in Denver, which I absolutely love and adore. Um, and I try to pop on the same evening, which is Tuesday, to do um, this kind of video here. And this week I... Actually, I only had one reading this week, um, but what happens sometimes is there will be, like the week before, for instance, I had four readings in one day, which is a lot. Um, and this week I had one reading, but the thing about this reading is that it came with a lot, so there was a lot of energy expended. And for me, I really believe that spirit doesn't give you anything that you're not equipped to handle, and so this week I got one reading because it was quite quite the reading. So I would love to tell you guys about that. Um, as far as how you can get a reading, I have an Etsy shop. You can book a reading online through there. That is a Zoom call. There's no time limit on it, and I charge $50. Um, but if you want to do a, an in-person reading here in Denver, you'll have to call the Shining Lotus and set up an appointment with me there on any given Tuesday. Um, we do take walk-ins. Absolutely, we do. It's just sometimes it's better to make an appointment because you don't know if you might end up waiting for the appointment before you or if I'm full up, then you might not get a slot. But typically, there's room for at least one walk-in a day. So you're welcome to walk in as well. Um, I will put my email down here in the description box of this video. So if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask me. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to hear about from a psychic medium, about my experiences or my thoughts on things, I don't really know what it's like to wonder about somebody like me because I am me, right? So if there's ever anything that I can clarify for you guys or there's any content that you would like to see on my channel, I would absolutely love to hear from you and know what that is. Um, I hope you guys are really enjoying these in-person reading reviews that I do each week. I really enjoy doing my in-person readings and... Um, just so you know, if you do get a reading from me, I might do an in-person reading review on YouTube like this, but I will never share any of your identifying information. Nobody will ever know who you are. And if you specifically ask me not to talk about your reading, I will not. So I want you to know that everybody that I speak to um, or speak about here on my YouTube channel has given me express consent to talk about their reading in kind of an anonymous way. Um... And if, you know, if they're really uh, vehemently against having their reading discussed, then of course I wouldn't do it. So your privacy is of the utmost importance to me. I feel like it is a very sacred trust that it takes to get a reading done with a, with a psychic medium. Um, and so I just want you guys to know I'm not going to put all of your laundry on blast or anything like that. So um, what we talk about in the reading for the most part is sacred. It is secret. It is yours. Um, confidential. Absolutely. Your identifying information is always going to be confidential. I will never give away any of your email or phone number or any of that um, information, not even your first name. So just so you know, your info is safe with me. Um, this week I had one reading on Tuesday in person. And it was interesting because the night before on Monday, I had a visitor, a spirit visitor. And this visitor was um, a blue spirit. Uh, and so it's hard for me to explain this. Um, I do see spirits sometimes, not usually. I sense them more than I see them. I've asked not to see them because that can be very confusing for somebody and um, distracting. If you're trying to have a conversation, and there's just somebody standing behind somebody else. It's really a little bit distracting. So I have asked spirit not to show themselves to me unless I need to know that they're there or for some reason I need to see them. So I had a visitor the night before I did this reading and this visitor was a very exuberant blue spirit that woke me up several times in the night. Um, there was nothing unpleasant about this experience. It was just somebody I wasn't familiar with um, and I did ask them to back off and they did. They were very respectful of that. Um, 
the next morning when I got to work, I told the people that I work with, I'm like, I think it's going to be a one reading day, but it's going to be a big reading. And that's exactly what happened. So um, I got to work and not much happened until the afternoon. Then this uh, young woman came in for her reading and she asked if I had time for a walk in, which I did. And so um, she decided to go for an hour long reading. Now, let me just pause here and talk a little bit about cost, prices, etc. Because I do get that question a lot. How much does a reading cost? So if you are doing an in-person reading with me at the Shining Lotus in Denver, um, there are two different prices. One is a half hour reading and one is a full hour reading. The half hour is $50, uh, $50 I believe. And the full hour is 90 So that's the, the cost. Um, the thing with doing it in person is that we have time limits. So it's a half hour or an hour long reading. When I do my readings via Zoom, uh, it's just me. I get 100% of that money minus taxes. And I don't really put a time limit on it. They typically tend to last about an hour. Sometimes they go a little bit over, but I don't put a time limit on it because spirit just kind of lets it come to a close naturally. And it works out for me to do it that way because I'm doing it from home and I don't really have to have a time limit. So that's one of the perks of doing the reading online is just that you get kind of more, more time for the, the cost. But the nice thing about doing it in person, obviously, is that you're in person, you're face to face. My readings tend to be a little bit more clear when we're in the same room. So that's just something to keep in mind. This woman opted for an in-person reading and she came into the shop. Uh, she asked for an hour long reading, which is not unusual at all. Um, but I knew it immediately when she came into the store that this was who I was going to read for. It, it was just that same spirit that had visited me the night before was with this woman. And so I immediately recognized her. Um, when she came into my room, we settled in. I went over kind of what to expect in the reading. I, um, At the beginning of my readings, I light a candle, and that is Spirit's signal that I'm ready to work. And so I lit my candle, and the first person to come through was a – it was that Spirit. It was a um, – uh, what I wrote down. So what happens is I'll light the candle, Spirit will start communicating with me, and then I'll write down what I'm receiving – and then I'll discuss it with my client. So, or the sitter is what I usually call them. Um, and I wrote down younger male, chest sensation, short of breath, wind knocked out, cold. Uh, either early 20s or late teens. And I said car accident, question mark, hit and run, question mark. And then um, I started talking to this young woman who came in for the reading. And she explained that, yes, this was a young man that she was friends with in high school and he had been hit by a car and it was a hit and run. So when we discussed it a little bit further, I asked her if, if justice had been done or not. And she said, kind of, but not really. Um, we went into a little bit of the details of what happened to this young man. Um, sorry, I just got startled <laughs> and it just, um, progressed from there. So we just talked about, you know, who he was to her. It turns out this was a childhood friend that they had grown up together. And then he had unfortunately been struck by a car and passed away. And so the sensations that I was getting was very much in line with how that would feel. Um, and it was kind of sad, you guys, this is why this reading took me so long to recover from, because not only was he young and that's sad and it was a hit and run, which is even more sad, um, I could just tell that the reason that this young man had not moved on completely is because of his mother's grief and she's not capable of really assimilating the experience and, and releasing the trauma and moving forward with her life. And so because of that, he's just sort of in between worlds, you know, it's not that he can't go home. It's just that he doesn't want to leave her in the condition that she's in. So I did talk to this young woman who is still in contact with his mom and plans to talk to her about it. We recorded our session, so she's going to actually play the video, the recording. It's not a video. It's just an audio recording for the mother. Um, and then also give her my information in case she has any more questions. But it was really difficult because um, I had a similar experience when I was young. I had a friend pass away. It wasn't a car accident, actually. He had a seizure. But he passed away, and that was my first experience with death. And this was her first experience with death. So it was... Um, that part was a little bit emotional. 
But then her reading, it got better from there. So after that, she had an older male come through. I said, older male, body sensation, metallic, chemo, question mark, stomach or liver or bowel, cancer, question mark. And I said, great grandpa. Um, it could be sepsis is what I told her. And I can't tell because when I get the sensation of cancer versus sepsis, so if it's cancer, I tend to get like a sludge in my veins kind of feeling. It's like a metallic ick that comes from chemo. Um, but the feeling of sepsis for me is very much the same. The only difference is that chemo is cold and sepsis is warm because sepsis comes with fevers. So um, I did get some heat sensation, so I think it might have been sepsis, but she actually did not know who this person is. She said it sounds like it could be her great-grandpa, um, and she's going to do research and get back to me on that, but what was really cool is uh, this person brought forth for her some tools that they thought that, they should, that she should use. Uh, she had just recently gotten into tarot and things like that, and this spirit was saying um, you should actually be using crystals and runes, and you should be journaling. So, we talked about that and she said that with her, she's just recently discovered some of her ancestry and she feels like some of it might be missing because obviously if you go back far enough, it's not going to show up anymore. Um, and the percentages were very small, but with all of the stories that she's heard from her family, there's some sort of Germanic connection to the Germanic tribes of old. So she's going to start learning about runes. She actually picked up a book the same day, which I thought was fantastic. Um, and as far as the young man that came through first is concerned, like that was a really emotional and a, a very large portion of the reading. Um, and then the great grandpa or whoever it was that came through is what I call a toolbox guide. And so we have guides that protect us, our guardian angels. We have guides that guide us to the tools that we need in our life. So these are our toolbox guides. And then we have several other guides depending on what our needs are throughout our lives, including our lifelong guides. And then some more short-term guides that come to teach us lessons or guide us to something or guide us away from something. So I thought she had a really beautiful reading. Um, after we spoke to her spirit family uh, members, we actually sat and talked for quite a while because as it turns out, this woman is a budding psychic. Uh, she is a budding medium and she has had that realization. Um, and so I just gave her some advice about being a medium and how to get from where she is to where I am in that you can start doing readings and be comfortable with it because it is quite a difficult journey to go through in order to become a medium. Um, it's not something I would have chosen myself. <laughs> Absolutely not. But it's not something that you can really get rid of either. So I just discussed with her how, um, you know, to cope, how to get to where she needs to be in order to do the readings and still keep her sanity. And one of the biggest roadblocks she was hitting is her own grief and just holding on to it. And I know for a lot of us healers, a lot of us mediums, a lot of us, anybody with psychic gifts, and we all have psychic gifts, the hardest hurdle for us to overcome is twofold. Number one, it's worrying about whether or not you're doing it right. It is the most natural thing in the world. When you do it, you just do it. When it happens, it just happens. It's very simple. However, the hard part is shutting off your mind and allowing it to happen. And the second part is our own emotions block us from being able to help others. And so for me, I know that was a huge hurdle. I had to release a lot of grief. I had to do a lot of personal introspection and healing. Um, and it's an ongoing process to this day. It really is. I don't know that I'll ever get to the finish point of that. But um, my advice to her was it's okay to grieve. You need to grieve. And the thing about it is whether you're the person who's strong for everybody else or not, you can't get rid of grief by not feeling it. You have to feel it. You have to move through it. And so grief is something I wanted to talk to you guys about a little bit today and just explain that it is not a bad thing. Grief is actually one of the most beautiful human experiences, even though it's painful and terrible and wretched and nobody wants to go through it. And I'll tell you why I say that. Without grief, we would not have the appreciation for the fragility and preciousness of life. If we all knew we were going to live forever, right, we wouldn't say, I love you every time somebody walks out the door because, oh, it's, I'll just see them 
constantly forever. I don't have to worry about that. And the thing about grief, people think that grief is this terribly wretched emotion that we go through. And it's not just an emotion, it's an experience. Um, but the thing about grief is that it is equal to the love that you felt for the person or the thing or the animal that you've lost. And you can grieve for all sorts of things. Like I have a chronic disease and I grieve for the healthy version of myself constantly. It's been quite an ongoing process. Um, it doesn't have to just be death that you grieve for. You can grieve for broken relationships, for lost friendships. You can grieve for former versions of yourself. I mean, grief is a very natural state of being. Of course, we don't want to live there all the time. But what makes it beautiful is, is knowing that grief is equal to the love that you had. And so if it feels like the grief is immense and enormous and impossible to overcome, it feels like it's the magnitude of the universe, that's because the love that you had was that big too. And how beautiful is that? How absolutely beautiful is that? And so I want to encourage those of you who are grieving to allow yourself to feel that and to acknowledge and appreciate the fact that that is not only normal and healthy and beautiful, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing because in the contrast of life, having all of this wretched pain and suffering that we experience when we lose somebody is the only measure that allows us to truly appreciate the love that we are blessed with for however long, you know, whether it's a day or decades with somebody. That love is so big that, of course, it leaves a wretched hole because Grief, you know, it, it, it doesn't come from, like if somebody you don't like passes away, somebody you don't care about passes away, you say, oh, that's sad. And then you move on with your life, right? But grief is this consuming, like overwhelming sensation. It almost feels like it'll never end. And so many people are so afraid of how big it is that they try not to feel it. They try to avoid it. And I have to really encourage you. Number one, if you're feeling overwhelmed by your grief, to reach out to somebody and get some help. There are plenty of people, counselors out there, um, you know, if you go to church, somebody in your clergy, reach out to a friend, to somebody, and let them know this grief is consuming you and you don't know how to overcome it. Because the thing is, it can be very isolating and grief can lead to the depression. And we don't want that. It can also lead to anxiety. You could be afraid to get close to people because you don't want to lose somebody again. And we don't want that either. So in order to grieve in a healthy manner, you number one have to acknowledge that grief is an expression of love 100% of the time. Grief doesn't exist without love. It is just another name for love. It is another side of love. It's the different face of love. And the contrast of grief to joy we truly appreciate, love, and cherish the people that we have only because we know that someday we will lose them or they will lose us. And that is what makes life so precious and beautiful. And so I really want to encourage you not to run away from your grief, but to do your best to feel your way through it. And if that means that you need help, absolutely get that help. There is nothing wrong with getting help. There is nothing wrong with taking medication. I'm an herbalist and I fully endorse medication if you need it. Um, but you're not alone. Grief is such a, such a common human emotion because death happens to everybody and loss happens to everybody. And you can grieve without a death. You can grieve because you lost a sense of who you are. You can grieve because you lost a relationship or a friend or a job. Um, there's so many things that we can grieve in this life. And because of that, it is such a universal feeling that almost anybody you reach out to is going to understand how you're feeling. They really truly are. I mean, maybe not exactly how you're feeling. If you've lost a child, I don't understand how that feels. Um, I, you know, I have had a, an early loss in pregnancy, but I haven't lost a, a grown, you know, an older child. So I wouldn't know how that feels. I haven't lost a spouse, so I wouldn't know how that feels, but I do know what it feels like to lose somebody that I love. And I do know that sometimes it feels like you can never get over that hurdle. And it feels like if you start crying that you'll never stop. And I promise you, you'll stop. 
there aren't enough tears for you to cry forever and you'll find joy again. And remember that the people that you loved never want to be remembered as your grief. They don't. Like they didn't bring you grief when they were alive. They brought you joy, right? They brought you laughter. They brought you happiness. So feel your feelings, feel your way through the grief so that you can get back to the place where you remember and honor and cherish how absolutely magnificent, happy and wonderful that they were because you can't get to that place of really celebrating their life until you mourn their death. So that's just my two cents of the day. Um, I know I'm not a grief counselor or anything like that, but in this line of work, I see more grief than anything else. And I have grieved a lot myself. And I just want to encourage you all to take better care of, of yourselves when it comes to grief. Um, grieving is self-care. Absolutely. It is one of the hardest parts of life that you'll ever go through. It can be one of the most isolating sensations that you ever go through. But I will tell you that almost everybody you know has experienced grief in some form or another. And all of them will have compassion for you because it is such a wretched feeling. And nobody wants you to feel alone. So I just really encourage you to reach out and, and find somebody to talk to if you're grieving and you feel overwhelmed by it. Your mental health is important. And I want you to find joy again. So... That's kind of all I have to say today. Um, I do have some more readings coming up this week online through Zoom. I might do a second review. I apologize for this video being late. I actually had to process some of my own grief this week. And um, I have a funeral coming up on Sunday. And it's just been kind of a long week. So I appreciate your patience with me. Um, I know I'm usually somewhat punctual about posting these videos. So I'm going to keep trying to do that. I think as long as it's within the same week that I did the readings, we're doing good. So I hope that you guys all remember that you're beautiful, sacred, beloved beings. And I'm so happy you exist in my world. Don't forget to take care of yourselves and each other. Drink lots of water. Get out into the sunshine and be grateful for what you have because this life is very, very short. I love you all. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, bye.